Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, after a year with elementary OS, with a few months here and there spent using other distros and desktop environments, it was time for a change. My newer build didn't get the performance levels I was expecting from it on that system, so I decided to go with Manjaro, which has been highly recommended. I selected the Budgie edition since I don't know these very specific DE. Manjaro Budgie Manjaro is an Arch derivative, first released in 2011 and following the rolling release model, which means that there are no new versions, you install it once and you just update it as it comes. Manjaro has three official releases, coming with GNOME, KDE and XFCE, and also has a few more unofficial, community-maintained versions, such as the Budgie, Cinnamon, Mate, LXDE or Dpin versions. Manjaro has its own repositories, but can install packages from the Arch user repositories, which is also called the AUR. Installation For convenience, I decided to fully erase my disk and only install Manjaro. The installer was fast, good looking and easy to follow, and I encountered no specific hardware related problems. Everything was detected and ran as intended, from the Ryzen 5 CPU to the AMD Radeon RX 580 or the 16GB of RAM in my machine. Manjaro has a specificity I hadn't encountered before. It asks, at installation, for a user password as well as a specific root password. You can make them both the same, but by default it will ask for two different ones. Apart from that, the installer was familiar and worked great. The Desktop Manjaro ships with a custom budgie desktop, with a top panel hosting the main menu, a task manager slash app shortcuts hybrid, and the notifications panel, as well as a quick access to Raven, a budgie side panel. The default wallpaper is nice, but weirdly, once you've changed it, you cannot set it back, it just doesn't appear in the wallpaper list. And that's all for budgie, no desktop icons, no app dock, no activities view or plasmoids, Budgie is a very simple desktop experience, and Manjaro did not change that, they kept it as light and legible as possible. The Raven side panel, which you can bring by clicking on its icon in the top panel, hosts your notifications grouped by application and a few applets, such as a calendar or an audio player. I could not find a way to extend its functionality by adding other applets though. And that's the point and the problem with Budgie it seems. It is simple and clean, but it lacks a clean implementation of virtual desktop, they are here, but apart from keyboard shortcuts you wouldn't know that, no overview mode to see all of your open windows at a glance, and a very basic alt-tab switcher. Now this might be the community shipped version of Budgie that is included with Manjaro, maybe the default Budgie installation such as what you would find on Solus is more complete, but on Manjaro Budgie it was very very simple, maybe too simple. Performance. By default, Manjaro Budgie is about as resource intensive as any other distro I've ever tried, using 1.2GB of RAM out of my 16. It's similar to GNOME, KDE or DPIN or even elementary OS. CPU seems lower though, staying around 1-2% to when idle compared to elementary OS which could easily go up to 5 or 6% just with Gala, its window manager. I must say, in use, I didn't notice any difference in snappiness between Manjaro or Elementary OS, which I used before. Apps open quickly, maybe a tad quicker on Manjaro, but nothing too noticeable. I never got any slowdowns or freezes, which is good as well. All in all, performance isn't too different from other distributions I tried. For more details on how the system behaved while playing games on Steam and rendering videos, I'll direct you to the video in the top right corner of the screen which has a more complete rundown of everything. Default Applications Here is where things started to go wrong. Manjaro Budgie ships with a ton of applications, like a lot, probably more than Mint, which already went overboard in my opinion. Amongst these you'll find great choices such as Firefox, Nautilus for the file manager or transmission. You'll also get the full LibreOffice suite, which is questionable since most users won't need all programs in there. And to complete this, you'll get HexChat, which is an IRC client, absolutely useless for new users who don't even know what IRC is. The Brazero Disk Burner, questionable in this day and age since most laptops and desktops do not come with CD or DVD drives anymore. And you'll also find Evolution and Thunderbird, as well as GNOME Calendar, which makes two email programs and two calendars on the same system. 
You also get the Lollipop Music Player, which looks good and simple, as well as Time Shift for backups and Steam, and a crap ton of configuration utilities for cute applications, for HP printers, etc. etc. This is way too much. I know you can install any of these, but is it easy though? No, it's not. Manjaro Baji comes with the PAMAC package manager which has its advantages, such as showing libraries as well as applications, and its drawbacks, mainly that it's cumbersome and opens a ton of pop-ups every time you try to install something. It is pretty slow to install, and its installed category is near useless, since there is no way to filter graphical programs or libraries. Package installation. This brings us to app installation. With PAMAC, you can get access to Manjaro's repositories, as well as the AUR, with a quick trip in the app's preferences. This means that almost any software that can run on Linux will be available natively through these archives. Sure, the deb packages are more mainstream and you'll likely find a deb or PPA for any program, but through Manjaro's repos and the AUR, you will not be wanting for much. Installation is easy, even though it's not very legible for a Linux newbie. Just check the checkbox near what you want to install and click Apply. PAMAC will even prompt you to install optional dependencies to let you choose, which is a nice touch, but again, absolutely too complicated for a newcomer. PAMAC also handles updates, which are presented per package. I still prefer the way Elementary OS handles its updates, with system updates grouped in a system category and other graphical apps being clearly identified but I guess Manjaro went with the package manager route rather than the software center. Settings. Manjaro Budgie uses the default GNOME settings app, which is not surprising since Budgie is largely based on GNOME. This means that not much is configurable apart from what GNOME deems option worthy, which is not much. Budgie adds its own settings panel, oddly set apart from the GNOME settings and available through the app menu or through Raven. It offers options to change the look and feel of widgets, icons and cursors, as well as enabling the dark theme and animations. You can also change the fonts and font sizes, and configure a few things in Raven, such as showing or hiding each widget. Window management features are also present, with the ability to detach modal dialogs from windows, change the button layout, which doesn't seem to work on apps with header bars, enable the tiling features, or center the new windows on the screen. Finally, you can configure your panels. This is where you can really tweak how Budgie works, with the ability to create new panels, change the edge of the screen they sit on, allow transparency, auto-hiding, change their size, or use a dock mode to use as little space as possible. Combine this with the different applets you can use, ranging from a simple app menu, to note-taking, accessing folders, enabling workspace switching, time tracking, or showing the weather, and you've got quite a configurable desktop. These applets, though, don't seem to work all that well, particularly the window preview or hot corners one, which would just show a black square instead of a preview of my windows. Maybe this is linked or related to Manjaro Budgie and not to Budgie itself, uh, but it's still a disappointing experience. Look and feel. Manjaro Budgie looks good. I said in my Linux Mint review I didn't like green, but this might have changed. Manjaro looks bright, with bold colors and good-looking icons. Its theme, called Matcha, implements some transparency, for example in the side panel of the file manager, and plays with red and green to give a nice, modern feeling to the desktop. The use of the Breeze cursor theme, generally used on KDE, is also a nice touch, setting it apart from the usual cursors you see on all other distros, without looking too blingy. The default choices of wallpapers, panels and themes make Manjaro Budgie a good-looking system, which I feel no need to tweak. If you do, though, the Budgie settings come with a huge number of included icons and themes, some of which don't even seem to work correctly, with color variants of the Matcha widget theme and the Papyrus icons. To conclude, I don't have much to hold against Manjaro. It's fast in general use, probably a bit faster than the Debian-based distros I'm used to. It looks good, it installs quickly without issues, and Budgie is a nice desktop environment with a simple and speedy feel. Manjaro Budgie comes with too many apps though, which seems to be the case for most distros these days, and it might not be the most accessible distro for new users, PAMAC being closer to Synaptic than to the regular old app store. 
but performance-wise, it actually destroyed my elementary OS-based system, running games at higher frame rates, enabling some proton games which would not run on the same system, and making me gain a few minutes of rendering time in videos. All in all, this gave me a good impression, and I think I'll stick to Manjaro for the time being. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed these impressions of Manjaro, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!